Alright, so this is going to be the last problem you have in your homework assignment. And the reason I'm, I've waited to record a video is, is if, we, if we scan through the homework real quick, you can see that problem number one comes with a video from the textbook company. Problem two, same thing, they've got a video kind of explaining the, the characteristics and how to graph it. Problem number three, same, applies to what you've seen so far. So number three, number four, number five, and even number six are all giving you situations similar to the videos that started off. When you get to number seven, that changes. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at a problem like number seven. So we find, want to find the equation of a circle that has the endpoints or points on the circle that are given. Well, our problem is, is that when we look at this situation right here, we don't have that spot right there, which is our center. So to be able to create an equation, we need a center and we need a radius. So we have a formula that we used recently, or were introduced to recently, called the midpoint formula. And the midpoint formula is, basically says I take my x1 plus my x2, I divide by 2. I take my y1 plus my y2, and I divide by 2. Alright, so we're going to let that be our x1 and our y1 and our x2 and our y2. So when we plug our numbers in, that would be uh, 3 plus 7 divided by 2, and then that would be 2 plus 4 divided by 2. That creates an ordered pair. So in this case here, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we come over here and we see that our ordered pair is 5 comma 3. And we can actually visually see that alignment now, so we're good to go. We have our midpoint. And now we need to find our radius. Well, our radius would be the distance. The distance from our midpoint, or sorry, excuse me, our center to an, a point on the circle. So we can either go from 5, 3 to 3, 2, or we can go from 5, 3 up to 7, 4. And either way, though, we're going to use the distance formula. And so we found out recently that the distance formula is equal to the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1, x2 minus x1, quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So in this case here, um, let's go ahead and we'll use, this is obviously going to be, what we call the x1, y1, and then just for the sake of using smaller numbers, I don't know, or no, we'll just use this. So this will be x1, y1, and then this will be our x2, y2. So we come back to our formula and we start plugging things in. So d is equal to the square root of 7 minus 5 quantity squared plus 4 minus 3 quantity squared. You can pull out your calculator and do it at this point. You can do it by hand. But basically 7 minus 5 is 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So what we find out is our distance which is actually equal to our radius, our distance is equal to the square root of 5. So that means that our radius, that distance right there, is the square root of 5. That means that is also the square root of 5. So we have enough information now to be able to plug into our equation. So we get x minus 5 quantity squared. Remember this is our h and this is our k plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals the square root of 5 squared. First two stay the same, so x minus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared is equal to, now just to verify this so that you see this and want to make sure that we feel comfortable, when, when I, sorry about that, when I take the square root of 5 and I square it, the square and the square root cancel, so my, ra my radius squared comes out to be just 5. So this is the equation of the circle that passes through the point 3 comma 2 and 7 comma 4. So the first thing we need to do is find our center. Once we have our center, then we use our center and one of our other points, doesn't matter which one, to find our radius, this is our radius, 
and then we take our radius and our center and we plug it into our equation to, to finish off. Alright, so hopefully that will help you get through um, section 2.2.